Today, my guest Alexander Roberts and I are talking about addictions. By the time he was 18, Alex had developed an addiction to illegal drugs, which quickly began to destroy his young life. We talk about what caused it, how he felt during it, and what finally triggered his turning point and opened up a path to recovery. Find out what Alex is doing now to help others heal on today's episode of Waking Up in America. I am Tai Chi. At 19, I was a superstar and I was lost inside. I left it all behind, switched continents and started all over. Years later, I found myself lost again, this time in the American dream. This is a story about awakening, about living the life you were created for, about going inward and discovering the joyous and purposeful person you and I are both meant to be. This is Waking Up in America. Welcome, Alex. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So good to be here. So, first let me just take this moment and acknowledge how good it is to have you here. Oh, it's wonderful. Connected. Wonderful to be here. Yes. Thank you. Connected, present, clean. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for driving all the way from Philadelphia to Nashville to be on my show. And it was a long drive. <laughs> but I would, I would gladly... Uh, Gladly make that drive any time to, to come here. So I played, this is how we met, I played at your, in your hometown. Yes. And it was a church concert at which I talked about depression and anxiety and, mm -hmm. and taking part in creating this turning point in your life. Yes. And you were there with your mom. Yeah, my, my parents were there. My dad was like, uh, Alex, you should, you should come to this because I, I sense something special about it. And I showed up and, um, you know, it was, it was an amazing performance. And then we got to talk afterward and we immediately connected. So it's funny uh, that my mom was there as well because I, I don't talk about my addiction and well, except for today, but I, I generally don't talk about it. And she's, she's actually the one that mentioned, you know, Alex, can I, can I tell her about your, your past? I was like, okay, you know, I mean, I don't, I'm, I don't hide it, but I don't go around telling people and, and that's why I'm, I'm so grateful that you're here and, and courageously opening up and, and sharing your story with us. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, if it can help one person, yes. you know, that'd, be, that'd be wonderful. So speaking about connection, I think that that connection is what a lot of people are afraid of and, and maybe we're not even in our society, we're getting so disconnected. And so that disconnect, is that something that, was part, that is part of your story, your struggles? I was always afraid to open up and, and be myself uh, from a young age, but definitely it's, it's always been a struggle. So tell me, tell me, take me to your, your, your childhood when you were a little kid. What made you like, have that feeling, that, that smile on your face, that I'm alive, big dreams? Um, well, truthfully, I wanted to be a pilot. Why? I just like, I always liked fans. Um, I don't know why they just they just always fascinated me and and just the idea of flying of, of being being free free enough to fly through the air that's just always been a dream of mine um, and uh, but funny enough I actually have found that feeling through music I can actually fly sitting in place or standing you know it just it takes me to another another mm -hmm. place so so tell me what happened to that little boy with dreams with with, a, with that passion inside when you moved from Philadelphia to the sub suburbs? Well, um, it was pretty much crushed. Um, I went into a new school, a different, different culture, I guess, and uh, I didn't fit in. I kind of, I was the target of a lot of bullying. The grown-ups in your life? Yeah, I mean, I mean, my parents are good parents, Yeah. but I guess they didn't really know what was going on. They didn't know the extent of it. Because, um, I mean, I, I was just a kid. I didn't know how to tell them I'm in so much pain. Like, I'm, you know, I can't, I can't take this. I didn't know how to vocalize that when I was you know, 12 or 11. Yes, yes, that's something that it's not taught in, in grade school, how to express the pain, the emotional pain that we're going through, especially at a young age. No, if anything, the opposite is enforced, especially the school was, that I was in, you know, strict rules, you know, no, no acting out, no, no creativity even. Mm. Like I, I used to love drawing and I would, I would sit there doodling and drawing uh, during class and uh, my teachers like chastised me so many times for it that I, I stopped. Mm. I, don't even, I don't even really draw. I mean, I draw sometimes, but 
They just sucked all the life out of me. We're talking to Alex Roberts, an amazing soul who have overcome a drug addiction. When we come back, we'll talk about his struggles and how he came out of it. We're talking to Alex Roberts. Alex, so now you're a kid and you're, you're an artist. You want to express yourself. You're not able to express the pain. You're being bullied. Yeah. What happened? Oh, I just uh, became extremely depressed and uh, I'm very suicidal. At that early age, so we were talking about 10, 11. What does that mean, suicidal at that young age? I mean, do you want me to paint you a picture? Yes, please. If you feel comfortable. Um, just wanting to die all the time, every day. Um, being more obsessed, more interested in death, because whatever it is, it must be something better than whatever life is. Um, you know, I was, I was just really in so much pain, I just, I just didn't want to live. I mean, I just, I withdrew into myself so much because the, my environment was so, so hostile and threatening that I completely withdrew into myself and disassociated from it. And I was just always in my, you know, in my mind, uh, mm -hmm. going and places. And so nobody knew about it? No, I mean, not really. I mean, my, my teacher said I had the worst case of ADHD that she'd ever seen. So, because I would just totally dissociate, be in my own world. Oh, and so, you know, so many parents want to know what's going on in my little child's mind and heart, and it's so difficult to communicate that. You know, if, if I could give any advice to parents, because I did plead with my parents to take me out of there. I did not want to go to school. I, I just, sometimes I would cry before going to school because I didn't want to go so, so much. Just pay attention to your kids. Pay attention, be sensitive to what's going on. Sometimes you have to read between the lines. I mean, they're 10 years old, they don't know how to articulate their, their thoughts. They don't know how to express themselves through words yet. Now you're in high school, and so now there's other things to distract and yeah, help yeah, you. Yeah, um, yeah I, I picked up the guitar when I was 16 um, because I was, I was listening to, to Pink Floyd, uh, and I would just, it would, it would fill me with so much joy, and I would, I would, I, I would just dance. And so you found that connection, that way to express what you felt inside through that music. Yeah, all the, all this, all this repressed angst and and and, and, and anger and sadness and all this deep well of emotion that I had nothing to do with. As soon as I picked up the guitar, it was instant love. I told my dad that I, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to play an instrument. And like the very next day, he brought me home my first guitar. I still have to this day, and like I just I felt completely in love with it. So connect music and getting into drugs for me. Did it have anything to do with each other, or? Well, no, not at first. Mm. My first drug, I guess, it was alcohol. Uh, when I was 14, I started drinking, and um, I mean I just loved it. I mean, it set me free. Mm -hmm. like I, was, I was just in so much pain, and it was just a pain reliever. It just relieved all that pain. I could relax for the first time probably in my life. Yeah. And then uh, when I was 16, I started smoking weed, and I, I loved that equally, even more so. But then I also wanted to be like my heroes. My, you know, Jimi Hendrix, Kurt Cobain, Jim Morrison, and you know, the guys from Pink Floyd, they all use drugs to explore and expand their musical horizons. So, you know, I, I, I thought that drugs contributed to their greatness. Mm. So I, I started experimenting with drugs and, uh, and, and adding it into, into my music and uh, seeing if it would make me more creative. Wow, what a, what a path. Alex, uh, thank you so much for, for, for sharing this with us, for giving us this insight. Uh, Alex, is, as, as, a, as a child, has so much expression, so much pain inside, that finally he finds uh, a, a, a something that helps him. When we come back, we'll find out what 
happened that helped him to get out of it. Do you feel stuck in life? Are you waiting for a miracle? Would you like to transform your pain and anxiety into joy and freedom? Here's how. The answers are in my book, Turning Points. There are dozens of stories of people like you, people stuck in addictions, abuse, and bad relationships. But they all took that first step. They all went on a transformational journey, and so can you. Visit wakingupprevolution.com, amazon.com, or any major online bookseller. Get your copy and turn your life around today. We're talking to Alex Roberts, a musician, singer, songwriter, guitarist, who overcame a drug addiction. A drug addiction that started from a place of feeling so much pain, being depressed, anxiety, from not being able to express who he truly is inside. Thank you so much for sharing this. You know, when I, when I announced that I was gonna have you on the show, several of my viewers and friends asked all these questions. How can we understand, how can we, if we, because we feel if, if we understand as parents, as friends, why, how the addiction starts in the first place, why does anybody start using um, drugs, then maybe we can help before it even happens. That's a complicated question. Yeah. And there's no simple answer. And there's not one fit all, I suppose. Absolutely yeah. not. Um, I mean, part of it is, is depression. If a kid is in a, in a hostile environment, they can't express themselves, they're trapped, they're depressed, that's, that's gonna be a problem right there. That they're gonna be more prone probably to addiction. I mean, I believe that addiction is, is a disease yes. of, of the mind, of the brain. Um, there is neuroscience to back that up. I mean, I'm, I'm not a doctor, but um, there's, there's definitely science to, to back that up. T tell us the part of the story when you decided to to quit your drug addiction. At that point, it wasn't just weed and alcohol. That's that's true. Um, yeah, the, uh, the 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 marijuana uh, stopped producing the same effect. So I started looking for other things, um, other heavier substances, which I won't get into in detail. I mean, I, I think that more than anything was was capable for the process that was destroying my mind mm. and, uh, and my body. But I, I tried all kinds of stuff, whatever I could get my hands on, anything to get me out of myself. So what happened that brought you out of that? At a certain point, the joy I got from drugs started to go away and it just started to became, become immense suffering. Like if, if I was depressed when I was young, this was just 10 times worse. And it, it started to destroy my music. Like where before music was, you know, the love of my life, now it was actually painful for me to listen to music. Wow. Can so you, you imagine that? Yeah, so you went from pain, found something to numb the pain, and now you're in the same place, just in pain. Worst place. I, I can't even describe it. But what brought me out of that was I, I was suffering under the delusion that the drugs were doing something for me. I thought it made me more, I don't know, attractive. I thought it helped with my music. Um, I thought it did this, did that for me. And a friend of mine, he said, tell me one good thing it does for you. And uh, until that moment, I'd never thought about it in those terms. And um, I, I, I sat down and I made a mental list. And I realized this has taken everything from me, everything in my life that's important to me. This has taken my relationships away, my friendships away. This has taken the beauty out of the world. There was no beauty in the world. I, this has taken away my joy. I forgot what it felt like to smile and to feel joy. This has taken my music. But the, the addiction, I guess, subconsciously convinced me that it was, it was doing something for me. But in that moment, I realized it was a lie. And I, I stopped doing drugs right there from that day on. The moment of awakening that brought Alex to realization that the drugs were not doing much for him anymore. When we come back, we'll have a little bit more to explore about his amazing journey. Are you planning a live event? Looking to bring inspiration and a fresh approach to wake up your community or organization? 
Tai Chi's keynote concerts are transformational experiences that lead your audience to a life of joy, authenticity, courage, and purpose. Book Tai Chi for your next event now by visiting wakingupprevolution.com. Alex, now that you are realizing the drugs are not doing anything for you, what is the first step you took? How did you get out of this? Well, the first step was to stop. And I stopped cold turkey. Um, what gave you strength to do that? I just realized that it had taken my music away from me. So the love. The, the love, love of, of my music, music yes. definitely. Um, one of the first and most important steps was, was having people that I could call and talk to. Find a support group. Because early sobriety is so, so hard. It was more painful after I stopped than when I was using yeah. for, for a couple months. And, um, you know, if, if I was depressed when I was little, it's just 10 times worse. I, my anxiety was through the roof. I would have panic attacks. I thought I was having heart attacks. I, I couldn't go into public places. I, I couldn't go to a restaurant and relax long enough to eat a meal. There's was, was no, was impossible. I, I, didn't, I didn't even leave the house during the day uh, for like a couple months probably. And I, I mean, one of the most important things, if not the most important things, was, was learning to get honest about where I was at and sharing that with other people. Having someone I can call like in the middle of the night right. saying I'm freaking out, you know, I need help. And just to have somebody to talk that through with. Yes, and what I hear you say is, is when you say being honest is to face the addiction, face, and, and you said when we talked earlier, y y you can do it without the meds. Yes. But it takes a lot of soul searching, yeah. a lot of that facing the yeah, truth. Yeah, um, it, it takes it takes work. I mean, it, it's it, it's it was a long road from where I was then to where I am now. It took a lot of soul searching. It took a lot of introspection. It took a lot of um, a lot of courage. Um, you know, I, I had to. One of the most important things I learned in in my recovery was to to move outside of my comfort zone. Little by little, baby steps if necessary. Mm. A lot of days it was two steps forward, one step back. Five steps forward, four steps back. But I was always moving forward the whole time. You know, we, are in, we live in a society where everything has to be fast and every fix has to be fast. Yeah. And what you've done is you've taken this long practice, long road to yeah. get to health. I mean... Because it sounds like you're addressing the real issue that got you there in the first place. Yeah, I mean, it, it, in our society, we want, a, we want a quick fix for everything. We want to believe that a pill can fix all our problems, but it, it can't. Um, I mean, we, we want to believe that, you know, we can, we can fix it. We can just go to the doctor and have him, have him ma wave a magic wand and fix all that for us. And mm. in my experience, it doesn't work that way. In my experience, it's, it's, it's a long journey. So I, um, I have a, a viewer who asked, uh, Andy from, from Cincinnati, um, she said, you know, given, given how far you've traveled on your journey through addiction, what do you most look forward to in the future? You know, honestly, I don't really, I try to stay in the now. In the present. Beautiful. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, I try to stay in today. Yes. Um, because, um, I mean, I feel like if you, if you obsess too much about the future, you miss what's in the present, and, and life is, is in the present. Yes. It's and, not in the future. Uh, yes, and the future brings worry about the future, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, and Rob um, from uh, Virginia, he, he says, what would you say and or do for a young person that currently feels trapped in their addiction and has lost hope? I mean, there is hope. I mean, I've been to the darkest of dark places where there was not a shed of hope not a ray of hope and you can come out of anything um but you can't do it alone mm -hmm. reach out ask for help i mean i had to swallow my pride you know my pride almost took me t to the end of my life yes my pride almost killed me i had to let go of that and mm -hmm. ask for help now that you're here and we're so grateful and so just grateful that you're here Let's, let me ask you these one-word answers, okay? okay? They're fast, right. and what makes you feel most awakened? My music.
Music is a big one. Your biggest challenge? Fear. Your favorite treat? Music. <laughs> Most grateful for? Just to be alive. Oh. <laughs> what was the last picture you took with your phone? Oh, of this uh, a picture of this beautiful art gallery. That I I'm know, in. isn't that great? It's lovely. Okay, finish the sentence. I believe and a lot of different things, and I can't think of one most pressing one to mention at the moment. Good. <laughs> All that a world needs is? I want to say love, but that's real cliche. Uh, well, maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. True. <laughs> if I could abolish anything from the earth, it would be? I guess the addiction problem mm. in America. Blue or green? Green. Guitar or piano? Guitar. Dancing or fishing? Dancing. Driving or flying? Flying. East or west? West. Sunrise or sunset? Sunset. Poetry or video games? Poetry. <laughs> <laughs> this year you claim? I claim... I don't know. Uh, I claim I'm going to do my best to, uh, to continue walking this path. And uh, try and look at the, the steps forward, not the steps backward. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. After a long process of searching his soul, looking deep inside, and finding strength to overcome his addiction and stay on that path of recovery. Alex is now writing about it, speaking about it, and helping others to, um, to do the same. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I try to help others when I can. Um, well, I think your music does that. It does. Yeah. It does. And uh, people have told me like that my music has is healing is is healing, and uh, I I like that. If I could, if that could be my way to, to do some good in the world. So you, the song you're gonna do for us is. Uh, it's called the aftermath of me. Um, it's uh, it was co-written. Uh, the lyrics were co-written by uh, me and a friend of mine who's also in recovery. Um, it's it's about. At first, it's about the the depths and the the dark places of addiction. And then the, the, the next movement, if I can call it a movement, is kind of about the, uh, the, the light and the, the beauty in recovery mm. and, the, and, the, and the joy that there, that, there, that there can be, that there yes. is. And it, it is definitely a movement because I hear um, when, when, when you came to our house, the first thing you did is sat by the piano and played Beethoven yeah. so beautifully. So yes, I hope, um, yeah, I can't wait to hear it. Thank you. I can't wait to play it for you. Going deeper into my mind It's no longer safe outside So I'll turn it inside out I opened up my mind There for all to see I found I couldn't breathe Inside, where devils used to hide This is the aftermath of me Reason stick and slide Out from underneath As I'm sifting through The aftermath of me Show me there's a light 
when I'm feeling most alone. Now I'm moving out from underneath my skin. Chase away the ghosts and the seeds of mortal sin. Lost inside Reason stick and slide Show me there's a Most It's been an incredible privilege and a blessing and a gift to tell these stories like Alex's. If you're someone who's struggling with an addiction, please look for support. Look for a local AA meeting or find American Addiction Centers. Log on to wakingupprevolution.com, reach out to us, connect with Alex, uh, check out his music. Just don't give up hope. You can do it. And if you know of someone who is struggling and would like to help them, share this episode with them. And if you'd like to take a step further, uh, support us in telling more stories like this one. Uh, become a monthly contributor by visiting patreon.com backslash waking up. And remember, wake up each day knowing your purpose and knowing that the world needs you. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. I'm Olga Alexeyeva. I'm the artist and owner of O Gallery. This episode was filmed at my studio at Marathon Village, Nashville. Please visit us at ogalleryart.com. Thank you.